he who turned to god must now this we can understand this is perfectly justified this is all perfectly justified in a way this is perfectly justified but what is not justified is he who turn to god must live to work he who live in the spirit must give his spirit he who has met the self renounces self must live the world now that assertion of must live is an unfounded assertion i have been foolish to the ages and ages and ages therefore i shall remain foolish is a wrong assertion i have been stupid i have been ignorant life after life life after life and therefore i shall continue for ever to be ignorant is a wrong assertion he who turn to god must live the world he is denied totally again the possibility of the world becoming a house for god that must live means means that it is imp- they are irreconcilable he would live in the spirit must live up life same thing he who has met the self renounces self well this is the theological argument this is what people do sannyasis do the monks do you see they either have this or that you see the voyagers the million roots of mind who have traveled through existence to its end sages exploring the world oceans wow i found extinction the soul harbor sea so go away from here disappear from here extinction well this has been the traditional solution for the spiritual problem either you have this or you have that that is the path of the ascetic i have found extinction the soul harbor sea so when you call up moksha liberty freedom you give up this world and live in the bliss of heaven to only at the doors of man's escape death of his body matters gate to peace so when the body disappears then man is peace as long as he is in the body he has no peace death of his soul is last felicity this is extremely cruel both of them are cruel death of his body matters gate to peace death of his soul last felicity in me all take refuge for i death am god because whether it is matters or it is soul it is only death who gives peace or felicity therefore in me all take refuge whether you are a materialist whether you are an ascetic all take refuge in me alone for i death am god and there is no other god but savitri reply to mighty death my heart is wider than reasons than the reasons thoughts my heart is stronger than thy bonds o death she is asserting that you have been arguing on the basis of reason you are making a kind of a metaphysical argument of things but there are other types of wisdom 
the wisdom comes directly from the heart, not from the brain, but from the heart. And therefore, my heart is wider than the reasons and thoughts. My heart is stronger than the bonds of death. Now, of course, heart is stronger than the bonds of death. This has to be only in the case of the heart of Savitri. It is not my heart, your heart, <laughs> yet. <laughs> See. My heart is stronger than the bond, oh death. It sees and feels one heart beat in all. It feels the high transcendence and like hand. It sees the cosmic spirit as it were. In the dim night, it lies alone with God. She is never away from God. Even in the night, it lies alone with God. My heart strength can carry the grief of the universe and never falter from its luminous track. Its wide, tremendous orbit to God's peace. It can drink up the sea of all delight and never lose the wide spiritual touch, the calm that brews in the deep infinite. It can drink up the sea of all delight. That is what Savitri's heart is. That is what Savitri's heart is. It can drink up the sea of all delight, all ananda. It can swallow, it can gulp, drink. In the Indian mythology, Rishi Agastya could drink a whole ocean. Rishi Agastya, whole ocean. So here she is drinking the whole ocean of delight, much faster than that. The calm that brews in the deep infinite. Okay, Savitri is still talking, but death, he said, art thou indeed so strong that you can drink all delight? <laughs> so strong, O oh heart, O oh soul, so free, and can thou gather then bright pleasure from my wayside flowering boughs, yet fall not from thy hand, journey's goal. May the world dangerous touch and never fall. Show me the strength and freedom from my laws. I don't respect any other strength. I don't respect any other freedom. Which cannot obey my law. You have to show me that. So all that hymn, chanting, etc., etc., has finally boiled down to strength. Show me your strength, your power. That is all I want to see. But Savitri answered, surely I shall find among the green and whispering woods of life, close bosom pleasure, only mine since he is or mine for him, because our joys are one. So she is asserting their identity. If they are pleasures, um, if they are my pleasures, they are automatically his pleasures also, and vice versa. Only mine since his, or mine for him, because our joys are one. And if I linger, Time is ours and God's. And if I fall, is not his hand near mine? All is a single plan. Each wayside act, deep in the soul's response, brings nearer the goal. So she says, this is the thing, 
slowly, slowly through the whole process, the soul's response is there and the goal is coming closer and closer to the whole process. Death, the contemptuous Nahil answered her. So he doesn't really respect yet, you see. Answered her, contemptuous Nahil, that is the whole power of death, that is the whole purpose of death in existence. In other words, if death is so strong in his assertion, if death is so strong in his assertion, then we can see that how greater will be her strength to remove that assertion. So it is a kind of a counterpoint. If this is so high and if that is being conquered, it will be still stronger. And yet from self and his gross mass live free. Then will I give. So prove the absolute force to these wise gods by choosing earthly joy for self demand and yet from self and his gross mass live free. Then will I give thee all thy soul desires. All the brief joys earth keeps a mortal heart. Only the one dearest wish that outweighs all hard loss forbid and thy ironic fate. Your ironic fate is there which will not allow Satyavan to come back. Dearest wish, your dearest wish outweighs all. One way, I cannot. My will once wrought remains unchanged through time. That is the eternal denial. Once I had decided something to be done, it cannot be changed at all, you see. What is that I had decided? I had taken away the life of Satyavan. Finished! You can't claim it back. My will once wrought, it is with that will I had taken away his spirit. It cannot be changed now. My will once wrought remains unchanged through time, to endless process. It will be there always, you see. I had decided to take away his soul, finished. You can't do anything at all. And Satyavan can never again be thine. So that is the sharpest sword he is using to cut the heart of Savitri. My will once wrought remains unchanged through time. My will, my law is there, finished. But Savitri replied to the vague power. So she still considers all that he is asserting so distinctly, so specifically, so emphatically as a vague thing. Why? Because if the eyes of darkness can look straight at truth, look at my heart and knowing what I am, give what thou wilt or what thou must, O death. You must give me. You may will or you may not will. It must be there. Once my heart has decided, you have to give. You have to give. So the whole thing is reaching at a climax. Death says no. She says yes. Constantly beating you up. If the eyes of darkness can look straight at truth, the eyes of darkness looking straight at truth, But there is a very, very big if. Can death look into the eyes of truth? Can death look into the heart of Savitri? Can death know who she is? If he can know that, then he will yield and give what he will will or what he must. Nothing I claim but such a one alone. 
she has asserted who she is, who Satyavan is there, and how they have come as messengers of God to do the divine work. And therefore, to carry out that divine work, I claim nothing but Satyavan. It is necessary for carrying out that work. There was a hush as if of doubtful face. So we are going to trip this way or that way. Savitri and death, they are arguing, counter-arguing. The occult weapons are being flung against the enemies, one against the other, occult weapons. Who is going to win? Which weapon is going to win? That has yet to be decided. As one, as one disdainful still who is a point, death bowed his sovereign head in cold ascent. Well, he kind of sees some merit in what Savitri is saying, and in cold ascent, he is now willing to grant something to Savitri. That she is an exceptional girl, and she needs, she demands, she deserves some reward, some prize. <laughs> I give to thee, say from death and poignant fate, whatever wants. The living Satyavan desired in his heart for Savitri. It's very cruel offer he is making. You don't need Satyavan. What Satyavan would have given to you? You want children? I will give you children. Mother says he is a joker. Very cruel joke, you see. He is cutting a cruel joke on him, you see. Very poor Joe. I give to thee, say from death and poignant fate, whatever once the living Satyavan desired in his heart for Savitri, in his heart for Savitri. Children, glory, whatever want he wanted for Savitri. Yes, I will give. Now, I give thee, I give to thee. Is he himself directly going to give? or he is going to give it to somebody. Satyavan, forget about him. There will be another youth, there will be some other person, or I come and give you children. I give to thee, say from death and poignant fate, whatever once living Satyavan desired in his heart was Savitri. 